Today on Decarbonize, we're going to be talking about Google's favorite nuclear reactor company, Kairos Power. Google has signed a power purchase agreement to buy power from Kairos's small modular reactors, or SMR, starting by 2035. But will Kairos succeed in creating a financially viable small modular reactor where others have failed? So what sets Kairos's design apart from others? And is there any chance they'll be delivering power to Google's data centers to help train AI algorithms by 2035? First, a bit of context. Google was able to power 100% of their operations with renewables in 2017. But Google's energy demand has tripled since then, and there's more competition for wind and solar generation, as many companies have also pledged to get to carbon zero. And demand for electricity is growing due to EVs, heat pumps, and AI. So Google wants to access another source of power without compromising their climate goals. And nuclear looks attractive. But the existing power plant designs, like the Westinghouse AP1000, used for Units 3 and 4 at the Vogel site that was just completed in Georgia, cost billions, and they take 10 years to build. That doesn't work for Google. But a small modular reactor that's built in a factory and set up at a site right next to a data center might just fit the bill. Too bad nobody sells them. New Scale looked promising. Founded in 2007, their light water pressurized reactor is like a small version of the AP1000. Safety was designed in so that even in the worst case, the reactor would not melt down. The Vogel reactors generate 1.1 gigawatts each. New scales would generate 77 megawatts. So it would take almost 60 of the new scale reactors to match the generation of the four reactors at Vogel. New scale had a contract to build their first reactor in Idaho, but when costs ballooned to $9.3 billion for a 460 megawatt plant, two and a half times the projected costs, Things came to a screeching halt. And even though the feds were willing to cover half the cost, that wasn't enough. New Scale is still operating, but they've had to lay off 28% of their staff, and they have no contracts outstanding. So the only company in the U.S. with a licensed SMR design can't find buyers for what they're selling because it's too expensive. But will Kairos fare better? New Scale took a conservative approach using the most common architecture for nuclear power, pressurized light water. Kairos has taken a maximalist approach. Everything is different. The fuel is more enriched. The modifier is graphite instead of water. The fuel looks like a bunch of golf balls rather than a straight rod. The coolant is an exotic molten salt rather than water. Everything is new. If the terminology like enrichment or the difference between uranium-235 and 238 is a bit confusing, you can check out my video on the Natrium Fast Reactor where I go into the fundamentals of nuclear physics. Then return here and things will make more sense. So let's look a bit at what Kairos is trying to do. And let's start with the fuel. In a typical reactor, the uranium fuel is enriched to about 4%, uranium-235, which is fissile, and about 96% uranium-238, which is not. The fuel is shaped into pellets and put into rods, which are lowered into the reactor. Kairos is using triso fuel. Triso stands for tristructural isotropic particle. Your guess is as good as mine as to what that means. This is a cutaway view of a triso particle, which is about a millimeter across. We see an inner core of enriched uranium surrounded by protective layers that act as a miniature containment vessel. Kairos, like natrium, is using fuel enriched to 19.5%. Currently, there's only one source of fuel enriched to that level, and it's in Russia. There's a U.S. company, Centris Energy, working on developing a supply chain for that fuel. But their roadmap is a risk for all reactors that are relying on it. The protective layers remain intact up to very high temperatures, ensuring safety in the case of coolant loss. 
The trisoparticles will be combined into golf ball sized pebbles at a facility at Los Alamos National Laboratory. These pebbles have another layer of protection on them. Another unique element of Kairos's approach is their coolant. Almost every reactor built to date uses water to carry away the heat. Water not only carries away the heat, but it slows the neutrons. And slow neutrons react more readily with uranium-235. Kairos chose molten fluoride salt coolant, and it doesn't slow the neutrons. So they include graphite in their fuel particles, which does. So it's a thermal or slow neutron reaction where an exotic liquid carries away the heat. The Kairos reactor, including the coolant, is designed to get very hot, around 650 degrees Celsius in normal operation, compared to 325 degrees Celsius for a typical reactor, or greater than 350 degrees C for the natrium reactor. In the event of a mishap, the Kairos design is stable at even higher temperatures, allowing passive cooling in an emergency. An upside to the high temperature operation is that the maximum efficiency of converting heat to electricity increases as the temperature increases. This is known as the Carnot efficiency, which I'm not going into, but it's fundamental to thermodynamics. Though the Kairos approach is very different than almost every operating reactor, there are two that are kind of close. The Chinese HTR-PM small modular reactors, which use fuel encased in pebbles and graphite as a moderator. These reactors use helium gas as a coolant, which is the biggest difference from the Kairos approach. And the design is inherently safe and should not melt down if power is lost. The first of the two units began operation in December 2021. Kairos has broken ground on the Hermes Low Power Demonstration Reactor in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, to test their approach. The U.S. government is committed to supporting the Hermes project with up to $303 million. If Hermes goes well, Kairos is working with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to obtain construction permit for the follow-on test reactor. Hermes 2, which will be built on the same site and generate about 20 megawatts of electricity, about a tenth of what a data center consumes. Given the Chinese experience and other research, there's every reason to believe that the Kairos approach will work technically and have a very high safety margin, which is important for small modular reactors. But the economics of their approach is questionable. Compared to a light water reactor, the fuel is significantly more expensive since it requires a higher level of enrichment and complex manufacturing processes that are novel. Kairos is building a new factory to produce the coolant as it's not something you can buy off the shelf. Compared to water, there's no way that doesn't increase the costs. SMRs are inherently more expensive until you reach the economies of scale, but so far no one has gotten even close to that. So we should expect the cost of building the first units to be high. Having a power purchase agreement from Google may help, but the terms of the agreement are not public. If the agreement is for $50 a megawatt hour and their costs are $100 a megawatt hour, it's not going to help much. So will Kairos be able to untangle the Gordian knot of the small modular reactor? Or will they fall prey to the economics like New Scale? I don't know. It depends on how much federal support they get, and how fast the cost of solar, wind, and especially storage fall, and how fast their partners ramp up production of the fuel they need, and public perception of nuclear power. And of course, how well Kairos can execute on their vision. And even if they can, Kairos won't be supplying significant power to the grid for 10 years. About the same as natrium. What do we do until then? In the U.S., the only nuclear reactor under development is the natrium one in Wyoming. The delays and cost overruns at Vogel have been like another Fukushima and scared all of the utilities off of nuclear for the time being. 
Do you think that Kairos can deliver a cost-competitive SMR by 2035? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you've learned something, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like the video, feel free to hit the thumbs down, but I'd appreciate a comment to let me know what you didn't like about my video. If you want to support my work, you can buy me a Guinness. And if you want to learn more about nuclear power, you can check out my playlist here. And please share this video with anyone you know who has strong thoughts, pro or con, on nuclear power.